Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-52. Simon the Sage walked down to the end of the royal balcony where Yolanda stood looking out over the city. She twirled the crown on her finger and seemed lost in thought. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, my dear. What troubles you? asked the sage. Yolanda feigned a smile and tried to deflect the question, but the elderly man shook his head smiling. You are still undecided or still puzzled at Pellet's death? Yolanda sighed heavily and shook her head. No, the information that the leather pouch contained the soul of the Arcanaloth was enough to explain the death. The dagger indeed had poison on it, as Phidias had said, and still retained enough to destroy the soul bag. The past weeks have become a blur. As for the other, I have made my decision. It's the one I need to make. The city is anxious for your announcement. The warrior nodded but looked sad. I will make the proclamation at high noon. Please pass the word around. Simon bowed deeply and returned inside the palace, snapping his fingers causing the guards to retreat inside. Yolanda held Pellet's crown and sorrow crossed her face. Her fingers gently held a small crystal container that dangled from her neck. She pursed her lips and began to walk away when she spotted a disturbance along Market Street. While it was difficult to see the exact nature from the distance, she could tell that several guards were trying to wrangle a diminutive figure that was quickly speeding his way through the crowd. A smile crept in upon her face, and she shook her head thinking of the previous week's events. A few hours passed, and a large crowd had assembled outside the palace. Simon the Sage stood next to Yolanda, who was unarmed but dressed in attire more suited for the adventuring trail. Nervously, she turned to the old man and nodded that she was ready. He smiled softly and pointed out that she could still change her mind, but she waved off the idea. This is the only thing to do, she sighed. It is the right thing, she said firmly. The kingdom will be well cared for. The man smiled and nodded, following the strong woman out onto the balcony to the cheering crowd. Green guards stood behind the warrior as she put on a large smile and waved to the crowd who roared with approval. She waved off and motioned for silence to address the crowd. The yelling trickled off and she began to speak. People of Saydown, thank you for coming today. I appreciate it more than you can imagine. It has been two weeks since the usurper was destroyed. For too long we toiled under the secretive problems caused by Pellet, a disguised fiend from the underworld. His plot was uncovered at the cost of many lives. She paused, contemplating the losses before continuing. So many lives altered, so many changes, but we have prevailed, causing the crowd to erupt in more cheering. I stand before you, holding the crown of our people. I, I am told that he who holds the crown is the rightful ruler. And the crowd erupted once again, showing their favor to their hometown girl. She waved off the accolades again and continued. I hold the crown, but I do not deserve the crown. Too many people gave their lives to protect us all of us. This was not the work of one person. It was not my work. I played but a small part in saving our way of life. I owe the dead a great deal, as you all do. A resounding round of applause followed for several minutes as the Denali people honored those who gave their lives for the cause. 
We honor the dead by moving forward, she continued. We honor the dead by making the lives of all of us better. We do not need to honor the dead with another king or queen. And the crowd gasped in amazement. Today I come before you not to accept the crown of governance. Today I come before you to help make a change for the good. A solitary ruler was nearly our downfall. Today I eliminate the crown from our lives. She then pitched the golden crown over the balcony into the crowd and continued. Today I say we all take part in our government. She nodded to Simon the Sage who stepped up. Today I turn over governance of our fine country to Simon. He will organize a council made up from all walks of life. The rich, the poor, the merchants, and the military. A council will rule our lives, not a monarch. As the crowd gasped and cheered, she continued. Going forward will not be easy. Growth never is. We will make mistakes, and we will learn from those mistakes. It is incumbent upon all of us to help our nation grow. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Let us come together as a people and make the days ahead the best they can be. She waved her hands to the crowd who applauded and cheered graciously. Yolanda stepped back as the crowd continued to cheer and she stepped out of the limelight. Simon bowed to her and stepped forward. He began to explain how he wanted to form the government and Yolanda walked towards the throne room. A tear fell to her cheek as she held the crystal container hanging around her neck. The guards snapped to attention as she passed, but she did not notice. That, that was for you, Grish. We all owe you our lives. Walking through the exterior door, she entered the Spartan throne room that had been gut gutted of all furnishings from the pellet years. Three men leaned against the wall waiting for her. Nice speech, said the armored knight, wearing an eye patch. She thanked Omel and asked him how the eye was, and he gave her a, ha, huh, missing, as a response. That damn Arcanaloth beat it out of me with that stupid gnome. The three men gathered around her, giving her a great big hug. Are you sure that was the right choice? asked Brother Stance of the Verte Order. The tears flowed freely down her face, and she nodded and tried to speak, but couldn't. The men smiled gently and gave her space. Angry at showing emotion, she swatted away the tears and asked how Harris's leg was. He proudly displayed a new walking stick and advised that he would be fine. Brother Stance still had his arm in a sling and said that the healers would be able to fix it, and he and Harris would always regret the loss of Omel's eye. Omel interjected that it was a small price to pay, but his face clouded as he pointed out that the others had paid a much higher price. Yolanda gripped the crystal amulet and nodded. Taking a deep breath, she wiped away the tears again. So, what do we now as the scuffling was heard outside the door, and a meek voice yelled out that he was a personal friend. The doors opened with guards attempting to grab a hold of a leith gnome who evaded their grasp. Yolanda laughed and motioned to the guards. Putting her hands on her hips, she tried to look angry and asked what the rogue had been doing. Phidias spoke and told the group that it was a madhouse out there. I was just roaming around, getting to know people. And this thing hits me in the head. He then produced Pellet's crown and looked disgusted. Some people will throw out anything, he replied. The group laughed and sighed. Phidias pointed to Yolanda's neck. I see you're keeping that huge oaf around. Yolanda gained a look of sadness and nodded. It is the last piece of our friend that I could salvage, and I will keep him forever. The group bowed in silence to honor their fallen cleric. 
So, said Stance, where do we go from here? As if on cue, the door opened and in walked Captain Apair. The flamboyant seaman entered and announced that he had just heard of a wondrous place called Pangea, and he was off to seek adventure in that land. The group looked at each other, smiling, and gave out a chorus of To Pangea! We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.